What's up guys, Asian here again with another build video and today we're going to be going over the Stamina Templar. The Stamina Templar is still pretty much where it has been in the past two or three patches in that that it has a very very useful utility move in Power of the Light which is pretty much the most consistent source of minor breach, minor fracture. Um, but at the same time, it also doesn't do quite as much DPS as the Stamina Nightblade, the Stamina Warden, or really any other Stamina class bar except maybe uh, the Stam DK and Stam Sorks. So while the Stamina Templar does have a lot of utility with Power of the Light, it doesn't bring as much DPS to the table. So um, a lot of groups will still look for a Stamplar for that Power of the Light debuff, but now more and more uh, endgame groups are shifting more towards having a Templar healer maintain Power of the Light, so that way they can use a Stamina Nightblade instead for that DPS slot. So Stamina Templars still have a place in Vet Trials, but it is getting a little bit harder to get into very, very end game, sort of like those score pushing guilds uh, as a Stamplar. That being said, Stamplers are still capable of pulling enough DPS to pretty much clear all the content in the game. So you don't need to, need to worry about not being able to clear any content. You're still able to definitely do that, uh, except for the... Uh, just don't anticipate being... Uh, having to, Don't anticipate being able to necessarily run with the very, very high-end score-running guilds as a Stamplar. Uh, because again, like I mentioned, they're shifting more towards having a... Temp Templar healer run Power of the Light rather than the Stamplar instead, so that way they can add in more DPS by having a Stamina Nightblade in the group. So, just like the rest of our build videos, we'll be going over gear, skills, attributes, everything you need to know to basically recreate this build. I will be going over a couple of set uh, potential set options for you, uh, set replacements in case you don't necessarily uh, have access or are in the process of getting certain sets uh, in the game right now. So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get started here first with our gear. So gear has changed a little bit here. Um, I will make one disclaimer here. My weapons are not ideal and that's just because of the way uh, the, set that, uh, that the set works. And I'll touch on that when we get to our front bar set here. So like I said, most of the sets in the game are pretty much stayed relatively constant uh, since summer set. So we're still using two pieces of Eldrath, so that's two medium pieces. And then we're using Perfect Reliquent as our body piece. Reliquent is still the strongest set in the game right now for stamina DPS. For single target DPS, very, very powerful. I have the perfected version here, which only drops from that Cloud Rest plus one and above. So if you don't have a group that's able to do that yet, you can just run the imperfect version, which drops from normal Cloud Rest. Again, Veladress, the strongest monster helm set in the game for stamina DPS with that weapon damage as the one piece and that two piece having those three disease spores. Uh, you can get multiple spores to proc on a one enemy uh, depending on how large the hitbox is. So Veladress does provide a very high amount of DPS that way. Now Veladress is a DLC monster helm set you need to have to have access to Cradle of Shadows, uh, which I believe is Shadows of the Hiss DLC. So you, if you don't have access to Veladrath, you do have two other Monster Helm options that you might want to pick up. First one is going to be, uh, actually you have three, now that I think about it. You have Krogs. The Krogs, the one piece adds in physical penetration, so you can put some points out of piercing and put them into other nodes if you would like if you're running this. Um, the downside of running Krogs is that um, it basically only deals damage directly in front of you, so you have to stay within melee range. Typically, that's not that big of an issue for stamina DPS because you're already within melee range, uh, but Krogs, the proc itself, actually doesn't do as much damage as Veladress or Selene's, which is the other monster helm set that you might want to consider picking up. Selene's is a base game set, very similar to Krogs. So the one piece adds max stamina, and the two piece uh, deals a lot of damage. Uh, whenever you deal direct melee damage, you have 50% chance to basically deal almost, in this case, 16,000 damage, physical damage um, every four seconds. So the proc itself is actually very strong. It's very comparable to Veladress. If only one disease spores hits every time Veladress procs. But Veladress can hit the same enemy more than once, depending on how large the hitbox is. So Selene's is going to be stronger that way. Selene's is also only single target versus Veladreth, which can hit up to three targets because it has three spores. And the final Monster set that you might want to consider running is going to be Stormfist. This is more useful uh, if you have trouble sustaining because the one piece is stamina regen. The two piece, when you deal damage, when you have 10% chance to create a Thunder Fist to crush your enemy, dealing X amount of shock damage every second for three seconds, uh, and then a final X amount of physical damage when the fist closes. Um, so this actually does a decent amount of damage. 
Um, but it kind of falls in the same trap as Lambrus does for Magicka DPS in that when it procs, it pretty much stays in place. So if the boss moves out of that Storm Fist, uh, then you basically wasted that proc. It also doesn't do quite as much damage as, for example, Selene's, um, mainly because of that kind of cooldown there. Uh, it's 8 seconds compared to Selene's every 4 seconds. Uh, it does have an easier proc condition. It's only when you deal damage compared to direct melee damage. Um, plus, shock damage doesn't really scale very well with your CPs, obviously. Stormfist can help proc concuss because that shock damage does have a chance of proc and concuss and it does have some AOE potential in it because uh, it does cover 4 meter radius um, so you might want to consider picking up Stormfist as well. This comes from Tempest Island. Um, so the other three sets do are base game sets so if you don't have access to any of the DLCs then you can run any of those three sets instead for your Monster Helm set. Now. Uh, for body sets, if you don't have access to Somerset because you do need to have Somerset to use Reliquent, you do have a few other options when it comes to uh, body sets. So uh, let's go over them really quick. The first one is actually a set that I don't have on hand right now uh, because it is a crafted set. It is Hunting's Rage. Uh, it's a six piece crafted set, so basically you need to know six research traits in whatever piece you want to craft it in. It is a base game set. It is in the last zone for each of the three different alliances, so that would be I'm remembering correctly, it, it would be uh, Reaper's March, Riften, the Rift, and I am blanking on the DC area. The DC area would be, I believe, either, I think it is Bankorai, uh, where you would be able to find these crafting stations. So you can either buy it off, kill traders, craft it yourself, or get somebody else to craft it for you. Very solid set. You still want to, yeah, you want to have it on the body because the five piece 299 weapon damage is a static bonus. The other set that you might want to consider picking up, let me see if I can find it here, uh, nope, not here, it's going to be a dungeon set, it is Leviathan, Leviathan is basically the stamina version of Mother Sorrow, so it just adds a lot of weapon crit, um, so this would again be a body set that you want to pick up, um, because it is a static bonus on that 5 piece, this is dropped from Crypt of Hearts, so you can farm it on Crypt of Hearts 1 uh, for those body pieces there. Dragon Hulk is also another set that you might want to consider picking up. Max Stam is not quite as useful for Stamina DPS compared to Magic DPS because you don't have as many Max Magicka modifiers that Magic DPS do. But in a pinch, you can run Dragon Hulk instead of uh, Leviathan. This is a medium armor set that you that is dropped from Dire Frost Keep base game set. But again, it's not going to be quite as effective as Leviathan because you don't have as much Max Stamina modifiers compared to like Max Magicka modifiers that a Magic DPS would have. Another set that I want to mention here is going to be War Machine. So this can be either a body set or a front bar set, but I would recommend putting it as a body set instead because you want to have Flawless Stormbreaker on your front bar. War Machine is a medium armor set that's dropped from Halls of Fabrication, and five pieces, whenever you use an ultimate ability, you and your closest two allies gain Major Slayer for 10 seconds. So it's a very powerful group buff. Um, Templars do have access to a very cheap ultimate. It can only costs 72 ultimate through uh, empowering sweeps. So it is very nice to use, but again, you typically want to have that on the back bar because you want Flawless Dawnbreaker on the front bar for additional weapon damage bonus. So you should be wearing War Machine as a body set instead. So those are kind of your options there for body sets instead of Reliquent. So you might want to pick up those sets uh, if you don't have access to Reliquent, but also for cleave damage. So in instances where you have a lot of trash to clear, Reliquent is more of a single target thing. So you might want to pick up one of those other sets for those trials where you have a lot of trash pulls to deal with. Now for our front bar sets, it, we have the newly improved Deadly Strike. So Deadly Strike is a PvP set, it is a medium armor set that you can get from Bruma, so you need to spend AP, it's 12,000 AP per box, uh, so you have a random, basically a random piece for Deadly uh, deadly Strike, so you do need to kind of buy it off of Guild Traders, you can buy it yourself by going to Bruma and purchasing uh, the coffer there, as long as your alliance holds Bruma. So it is a medium armor set, so you can use body or jewelry, doesn't really matter which one, depending on if you have Reliquent Jewelry or not, because Reliquent Jewelry is a little bit rare to find now. Um, and then we have Deadly Strike uh, weapons on the front bar, so this is a front bar set here. Now in terms of traits and enchants, so our armor is all divines, all stamina enchant, not a big surprise there. 
For our jewelry, we have three bloodthirsty and three weapon damage in Tyrant. You can also go with Infuse as your trait if you would like. Um, infuse is going to be more useful on certain fights where bloodthirsty is not going to be quite as strong. So, for example, Cloud Rest, if for whatever reason your raid lead allows you to play stamina DPS in Cloud Rest, uh, then you're going to want to run Infuse rather than bloodthirsty. But typically speaking, three bloodthirsty is going to be a very powerful combination. Uh, but you can go with any combination of Infuse and bloodthirsty as your jewelry traits. Now for our weapons, uh, I only have a sword here because you don't get Deadly Strike as any character templates. You have to actually go out and buy the coffers yourself. Um, so I was not able to get two daggers, so instead I got a sword instead. So I'm using dagger sword, but you would be using double daggers instead. We have Nurn Honed on our main hand with a poison damage or absorb stamina damage in chant, doesn't really matter. Um, and then for our offhand, we have Sharpened with, again, either absorb stamina in chant or poison damage in chant, basically whatever one is not on your main hand. For your back bar, we still have the Maelstrom Bow infused with a weapon damage enchant. Um, so again, you do want to use double daggers. I just have a sword because I was not able to get two Deadly Strike daggers on this template character. Uh, now, one thing I do want to mention here are the traits themselves. You do have a few options when it comes to traits. Uh, Nern Sharpened running the, the Shadow Mundus or double sharpened with the Shadow Mundus seems to be pulling out ahead in raid tests, raid parses. Um, so you can go and check out Lyco's video if you guys want to take a closer look at the results of their testing. Um, but Nern sharpened and sh double sharpened with the Shadow Mundus seems to be pulling out ahead. Now you can go with Nern Precise and run the Lover and drop points out of Piercing if you would like. That would be very similar DPS, a little bit less than what I have here, um, but it's still very good DPS nonetheless. Alright, so that's pretty much all of our... Oh, wait, no, there is still one more set that I want to mention here for the front bar set. So that is our Tried and True Advancing Yokata. So this is a heavy armor set that is dropped from Hellra Citadel. So it is a base game set, but it is a heavy armor set. So in order to make the most use out of it, you will need to have access to this armor set in order to transmute the jewelry uh, to Bloodthirsty. It comes in healthy because it's a heavy armor set, so you definitely need summer set in order to make use of this set. So you will need to transmute the jewelry, and because it is the heavy armor set, you will need the jewelry and weapons. So you don't want to have any heavy armor uh, on your body there. Uh, so... Advanced Yokata is a set that you might want to consider picking up for a front bar set. Another set that you might want to pick up as well. Uh, I don't believe I have it here. No, I do not. I have to find it. It is going to be... Uh, it's going to be Briarheart. Briarheart is a medium armor set that you can get from... Find it here. Get this from Rothgar. So it is a dropped set so you can purchase off of Guild Traders if you don't have access to Rothgar. So this is a front bar set. This comes in medium. You can get jewelry in robust, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, just make sure to get the robust jewelry. You can also get arcane and healthy uh, or Briarheart jewelry. So again, make sure it's robust. Um, so another set you can potentially run if you don't have access to Somerset. So you can't transmute Advanced Yokata and you don't want to go out and get AP to buy uh, Deadly Strike. Now going over our character sheet. So I am an orc. Orcs are going to be the strongest race for stamina DPS, assuming that you're able to sustain the full light attack rotation. Um, in this particular instance, we will need to do a few heavy attacks in order to sustain the rotation, but that's not that big of a deal. Orcs still end up pulling ahead. Other racial options include Dunmer. Dunmer are going to be a very close second because they only lack just a little bit of max stamina. Khajiits would come in in third for stamina DPS, followed by Redguards and Bosmer. Bosmers do have better sustain than red guards, typically speaking. They have 258 stamina regen versus uh, the flat regen from the red guards, as well as the 8% cost reduction in um, weapon skills. Uh, so Bosmer do have a slightly better regen compared to red guards. Um, but typically speaking, Orc and Dunmer are going to be stronger overall, with the Khajiits kind of sitting in that happy medium between decent sustain and decent damage with that 10% additional crit damage. For attributes, 64 points into stamina. You can put a few points into health if you would like. It's kind of up to you. Personally, I would not put more than 10 points into health because at that point, you're kind of giving up a little bit too much max stamina for survivability that way. For our Mundestone, we're going with the Shadow. Uh, so we will end up putting a lot of points into piercing to kind of make up for the loss of the lover. You can run the lover instead and take those points out of piercing and I will go over your CP distributions if you decide to run the lover rather than the Shadow. For our parse that we're going to be doing at the end of this uh, video, I am using Lava Foot, Soup, and Saltress. This basically mimics or is a very close imitation of getting orbs on cooldown in a rate. Um, so 
in an actual raid, you would be using gold food, so you would be going using Artem Thakwe Broth or Dubious Kamoran Throne instead. Um, but for the purpose of the parse, we are sticking with Lava Foot. You should be able to sustain with Orb Support using Dubious Kamoran Throne or Artem Thakwe Broth as an Orc or a, or a Dunmer uh, Stamplar. So just bear that in mind that if you are using gold food, you will have much higher regen than what is advertised here with Lava Foot. Now, Vampirism, you can be a vampire if you'd like. So you get 10% additional stamina regen when you're a stage 2 vampire, plus you get some damage reduction from the undeath passive if you're a stage 3 vampire. That being said, because you're in melee range, you have less time to react to certain mechanics. So that's just something you want to kind of balance out there. Uh, but if you do want to get that additional regen, then you do have to be a vampire. Now going over our skill bars. For our front bar, we have Biting Jabs, Rending Slashes, Power of the Light, Silver Leash, Rearming Trap, and Flawless Stonebreaker. We will not be using Silver Leash here. This is kind of a flex spot. This is here. Uh, so if you want to run Vigor or Deadly Cloak, uh, you can certainly do that if you'd like. But if you don't want to run either of those, then you can run Silver Leash or any other of the Fighter Guild's abilities for that 3% additional weapon damage here. Similarly, Flawless Stonebreaker here for the weapon damage bonus. You're not going to be using it uh, as your ultimate unless you, know, you need it for AoE situations. But even then, um, Powering Sweep will be stronger there. For our back bar, Razor Caltrops, Poison Injection, Endless Hail, Restoring Focus, Rearming Trap again. Again, this is more of a flex spot. You can put in Vigor, you can put in another ability here if you would like. Um, Rearming Trap just gives you that additional weapon damage while you're on your back bar. And then Empowering Sweep. This is actually going to be our primary ultimate that we're going to be using the whole time, and this is why we're able to use War Machine, because as you can see, it only costs 72 ultimate. All right, so that is pretty much it for skills and stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about our champion points. CP cap has not changed between Merkmire and Rathstone, so the CP cap is still 810, which gives us 270 points to put across each of our three different different constellation colors. Starting off with our green CPs, I'm 75 into Mooncalf and 75 into Nasty. That leaves 120 points, which you can put into the remaining nodes, really however you like. So I have 40 Shadow Ward, 40 Tumbling and 40 Warlord. Now if you want, you can push Mooncalf up to 100, you can push Nasty up to 100, and leave 70 points to play around with instead. That's kind of up to you if you want to make that Lash put push for that 1%. Now for our blue CPs, you have two main sort of distributions here. So this particular distribution is if you are running my setup. So that's Nern on the main hand, Sharp on the off hand, running the Shadow. If you're running Double Sharpen, then you can put a couple points out of Piercing, put them somewhere else. And if you're in the lover, you're going to be using, obviously, not this nearly this many points into piercing. But for those of you guys who are running Nern Sharp with Shadow, 49 Mighty, 63 Piercing, 52 Precise Strikes, 66 in the Thaumaturge, and 40 into Master at Arms. Now, if you are going to be using the lover and doing something like Nern and Precise instead for your main hand enchant uh, traits, I'm going to drop Piercing down to 28%. I'm going to jump Thaumaturge up to 72, jump Precise Strikes up to 66. Bring Mighty up to 64. So you have 72 Thaumaturge, 66 Precise Strikes, 28 Piercing, 64 Mighty, and 40 into Master at Arms. Now if you're going with Double Sharpened on the other hand, you don't need quite as many points into Piercing, but you still need a few points into Piercing here. So you would actually end up dropping Precise Strikes down to 56, and you have... Probably do a little bit less here. Go up to... 62 in the or should say 61 to precise strikes and 54 into piercing instead. You can even drop this down a little bit more, get up to 56 with mighty and 47 into piercing instead. So this is if you're running double sharpen because that extra sharpen does give you 1376 additional penetration. Now for our red CPs, this particular setup that I have is a one size fits most approach, so it'll give you very good mitigation across all the trials, but it won't maximize mitigation across any single piece of content. You will need to change your red CPs in order to maximize mitigation for any specific trial that you're going to be running. I have 81 Ironclad, 61 Thick Skid, and 64 into both Hardy and Elemental Defender. Alright, so that is pretty much all the build information, so now let's go ahead and talk about our rotation here. So the rotation is pretty simple, your back bar dots you always want to maintain, so that's Endless Hail, Razor Caltrops, and Poison Injection. You also want to try to maintain... Uh, restoring focus for the additional stam, so you do get 240 stamina every second. Plus, it is a source of major resolve and major ward, which really helps out your survivability with that additional resistance buff there. And then you want to make sure you have rearming trap up 
as well. Now, the big thing for Stamina Templars, the big reason why people want Stamina Templars in their group is Power of the Light, because Power of the Light is the only consistent source of Minor Fracture and Minor Breach. You can use Minor Fracture Poisons, you can use Minor Breach Poisons, but none of them are as consistent as Power of the Light. So you want to make sure you're casting Power of the Light pretty much on cooldown. So every 6 seconds, you want to make sure you're recasting Power of the Light. Don't cast it really too early because then you're not getting that, that copy damage anymore. Um, you just want to make sure you're casting it every 6 seconds. So after that copy damage goes off, that's when you want to re-up Power of the Light here. Now Jabs is a channeled ability, so you will not be able to drink potions while you're channeling Biting Jabs. So just bear that in mind if you're trying to figure out when, why your potions are not going off while you're using Biting Jabs. Um, so, Power of the Light. One thing I do want to mention here is that it is currently bugged. Purifying Light and Power of the Light. Both your secondary hit, your copy damage will not go off if you're dealing too much damage. So if your group has too much DPS, you will not get that reflected damage. That being said, you still want to run Power of the Light for the Minor Fracture and Minor Breach. So your rotation is going to look something like this. So we do do a static rotation here uh, with the Stamina Templar. If you're using uh, advance the Okada and stand on the front bar, you will be, end up doing a more dynamic rotation because you will want to save yourself to three abilities on the back bar. And with Empowering Sweep and cha and Restoring Focus, they're basically going back and forth with each other. You'll be using four abilities instead. So you will be doing a little bit more of a dynamic rotation with Advance the Okada because you will need to use three abilities, then swap to your front bar, uh, cast an ability, and then go back to your back bar and finish off your back bar rotation there. So here is the rotation if you're using Deadly Strike. Though. Deadly Strike is going to be stronger than Advancing Okada. So you want to just pre-buff with Restoring Focus, drop your trap. So you have time for two Biting Jabs before you go into Trap, and you have to recast Power of the Light. If you do need to sustain, do two biting jabs, heavy attack into trap, and then power of the light. That will end up reducing your power of the light uptime by a little bit, but if you need to sustain, then you, you have to do that heavy attack with the sustain there. You have two options. You can either do two biting jabs or one biting jab, and then a heavy attack. So here's the one biting jab option. So you do one biting jab, heavy attack, Rearming Trap, and then you do Power of the Light. You have to time it a little bit more if you decide to do that route. So again, a one biting jab would be looking like this. So that is your rotation. You will also notice that I'm doing a light attack into and this hail like so, rather than doing something like like this, where I do the bow light attack on the back bar for casting in this hail. So you always want to do um, Light attack ability, light attack directly into Endless Hell on your back bar here. I'm just gonna kill this dummy here so I don't have to wait for it to set or anything like that. And then we'll do a 6 minute dummy part so you guys get an idea of the DPS that we're able to pull with this build. Now if you want to compare this to other stamina DPS, just bear in mind uh, that stamina Templars do not have a native source of Major Fracture. So classes with Major Fracture built in, so that's the Wardens, DKs, and Nightblades will be doing higher DPS as a result of this. Nightblades and Wards in particular also have Minor Berserk, so you will need to take that into consideration as well. The Stamina Templar self-buff parses are typically going to be lower than um, DKs, Wardens, and uh, Nightblades because we don't have a source of Major Fracture. So now, let's go ahead and get started then with this parse here. So you want to do Empowering Sweep before you use Poison Injection. Poison Injection should always be the last ability that you cast on your back bar. So I try to do a light attack every third time on, on my uh, front bar here. So this would be an instance where I would want to do a heavy attack, so two biting jabs, heavy attack into rearming trap. And we continue on our merry way here. So again, I want to do it every third time on my front bar here, so that's time one. 
I too. And this will be time three, so I have to do a heavy attack on this front bar rotation here. Number two fighting jabs, heavy attack into rearming trap. Then into power of the light. that I just barely managed to make it to the end of that parse there. So that's what I was talking about when I was saying that Stamina Templars, uh, you will need to have the attack every two to three times you're on your front bar. So I did it every three, but you could probably do every two and you'd be able to make it at the end of the parse with a little bit of stamina to sustain there. That being said, remember in an actual raid, you will be running either Dubious Command Throne or Tame Takeaway Broth and you will have orbs as well. So your sustain should be a little bit better than what you have here. So we managed to pull 44.9k, just shy of 44.9k here. Again, this is without Major Fracture, so if you do want to add in Major Fracture, just bear that in mind. Uh, so you just have to add in 5280 additional um, additional penetration, and that's roughly 10%. Uh, it's usually a little bit more than 10% additional damage done. So if you just take add 10% of this, you will be sitting at around 49, 49k or so. So pretty decent overall. Um, so Biting Jabs strong here um so pretty much a, a lot of things here are actually buffed but deadly strikes so endless hail reliquin fighting jabs is buffed but, uh deadly strikes there's a caltrops poison injection in. um the bleed from rending slashes is buffed but deadly strikes so you have a lot of things here that are buffed but deadly strike here power of delights this is the re reflected portion so you can't crit off of this so you just want to make sure that the number of casts with power of light that can be crit is equal to the number of times you have the power of light reflection well, I cast it 20 times, and I have 20 second hits, so that means I did not overcast Power of the Light at all there. So that's one way to check if you're overcasting Power of the Light. It's also a way to see whether or not your second hits is actually working in a raid. So if you, you, know, you cast it 35 times, but you only see two hits, that means it's not working. And again, this is a known bug, um, but Zoss has not given us any word on when it is going to be fixed here. This Burning Light passive. Um, this comes from the Adric Spear passive. Basically, whenever you deal damage with the Adric Spear ability, you have a chance to proc this effect, which deals some damage here. It's actually pretty nice. It's pretty strong overall, but it doesn't contribute as much compared to a Magplar because Fighting Jabs is not really there as often compared to something like Blazing Spear instead. You could actually run Blazing Spear in one of the flex spots that I mentioned when we were going over skill slots if you would like, but it's not necessarily easily sustainable in longer fights as a stamina templar because it does use magic instead but that would end up giving you a little bit more burning light uptime so that might end up increasing dps just a hair it also improves your sustain because now you're using magicka for one global cooldown rather than using stamina instead so that is pretty much it for this build video if you guys have any questions or comments please feel free to them down in the comment section below hopefully you guys found this video informative and i'll see you guys in the next dungeon